Hello everyone and welcome to kind of a different sort of video of course. Uh, this is of course is Cade from the Legends Library podcast today to actually bring you the very first short form episode for this channel. I'm going to try and keep these spaced in between all the full length podcasts. That way one, I can keep you updated on what the future plans are and two, just to kind of branch off and do some stuff you know that won't take up 40 minutes to you know an hour. So today I'm actually going to be going through my Star Wars collection, which might not be the biggest or the grandest ever, but it's mine, and I'm pretty proud of all the stuff that I do have. So of course here, uh, this is pretty much the bulk of my collection. I have all of the uh, Star Wars Legends novels from the official Legends timeline and all that. Um, as we have, as I've said personally on the podcast before, I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars The Clone Wars, the 2008 TV show, and such, I don't think it really fits into the timeline, so I do did kind of avoid getting some of those novels. I do, of course, have some things that will reference it, but with Star Wars The Clone Wars, I do kind of pick and choose. But without further ado, let's get right into my collection. Um, obviously, like I said, I have all the way from Dawn of the Jedi, the Old Republic novels, the Darth Bane trilogy, Plagueis, all the Darth Maul novels. Uh, I have all the novelizations of one through six. Um, I guess up here, we also have, I have the Black Series Jaina Solo. Um, I also have just a, kind of just for decoration, but I have long since lost the back to that command strip. Uh, it's just a little plastic lightsaber I used to have up on my wall. I also have a Star Wars Expanded Universe collection, Luke Skywalker from the Dark Empire comics, which is, of course, one of my favorite Star Wars comics. I also have the hilt to one of my broken Ultra Sabers. Uh, the wiring came loose when I tried to pull the battery out, which is my fault, and since I'm not an electrician, I can't really fix it. Down at the second row, again, this is all just in chronological order from the Wikipedia page of the Timeline of Legends novels. Um, all these I think I've exclusively bought off of Amazon except a couple one day there's a deal at Barnes and Noble I was there shopping for one of my brothers actually but uh, this is where you kind of run into the pitfalls of buying used off Amazon um, I have several novels that don't have any dust covers on them which is disappointing but I much prefer reading novels in hardcover when I can um and then about those actually, uh, since I had mentioned them, it's I, I think it's very funny how thin the original trilogy novels are compared to the prequel trilogy novels. There's Bull Cut Anakin. Um, they kind of got progressively longer and thicker as we kind of went from you know four to five to six. Um, I really really love the cover for that novel as well, the episode six novelization. And of course, we get into my favorite time period, post-Return of the Jedi, which kind of starts with Trusa Bakura, because it takes place starting a day after episode six. And then we go up, got some more of the X-Wing novels, um, Tatooine Ghost, which is actually a, took me forever to find online and hardcover. Um, and then I have the Thrawn Trilogy in hardcover, which I'm very, very grateful for. Um, it's very easy to find Heir to the Empire in hardcover because they came out with the 20th anniversary edition, which has some very interesting annotations by Timothy Zahn. Um, moving on, we have the joy that is the Crystal Star, considered by basically the entire community to be the absolute worst Legends novel by very far. Getting into some more stuff here. The Corellian Trilogy, I really like. Um, the Thrawn Duology, which is uh, very important because it was the last uh, Bantam novels that were released chronologically. But since Del Rey was smart, they incorporated a lot of characters into their stories that they published as well. Which actually started with Vector Prime, which is the start of the 19 series, 19 book series. Uh, the New Jedi Order, which is my personal favorite series, to be honest. So we move down, star by star, by far the thickest legend novel. 
going all the way down 19 novels to The Unifying Force, which holds a huge place in my heart, not just because it's the end of the New Jedi Order, but actually my senior year of high school, I got to do a book report on, a, on any novel I picked. And at the time, I was reading The Unifying Force. So I was like, okay, this works because I'm already like a quarter way through the novel and I get to do a book report on Star Wars, which was just great. Uh, and then actually the next novels in the series here are the Dark Nest Trilogy, which is very important to me because way back, just about three years ago, these were the first three novels that I ever bought for my collection. Up until then, I had basically been reading books from the library. So I never got to keep them. And from the library, I had read the New Jedi Order series, and I had also read the Legacy of the Force series. But they kept talking about how Jason went on this kind of little journey, and the, well, they kept referencing the you know, Dark Nest crisis. So I figured, I'll get these books. So uh, it did take about two and a half years, but we did finally come full circle. Back in, I think it might have been March, but it was in the winter this last year, I finally finished buying the entire Legends collection. But then, of course, after that, we do move into Legacy of the Force, which I have all in hardcover, except for Revelation, which for some reason is like 80 bucks to get in hardcover on Amazon. And then Invincible lands itself all alone. And then, uh, if you did watch the previous episode, I mentioned these books, which are the kind of Jade and Core books, Cross Current and Riptide. And then we move the Millennium Falcon, which kind of bridges the gap between Legacy of the Force and Fate of the Jedi. The final series released, which I have all in hardcover, which I'm very happy of because I love these books. And then we have X-Wing Mercy Kill, which kind of ties up some loose ends. I don't know why they didn't include the events of this in this big series. It's, novels are sometimes weird. And then we have Crucible, which is the last chronological novel in Star Wars Legends. So it kind of brings a kind of an end. It was clearly meant to bridge to the Sword of the Jedi novels, which we'll probably never get. Um, but, you know, we can always hope. And then I have, of course, The Jedi Path and Book of Sith in print as well. And then I do also have this very cool source book, which is the Essential Reader's Companion, which offers a little summary of every single Legends novel, including the children and young adult novels, which hopefully one day I'll be able to get and add to my collection. And then up on top of my bookshelf, if we move over my kind of nerdy real-life history books... Um, I do have a couple more just random little things here. I have the Essential Guide to the Force. And I have two uh, role-playing source books. Uh, the New Jedi Order one and the Dark Empire one. I kind of just bought them because of curiosity. I kind of just wanted to get them, and they were pretty cheap on Amazon. So I got them, and they kind of just look neat up on my cover, or up on my bookshelf. And I have a little Darth Vader, which is supposed to be a Christmas tree ornament, but uh, since I don't celebrate Christmas in my apartment because I just live by myself, I didn't see the need for one, so I just bought the top off him and he sits up on my bookshelf. And then I do have the six Star Wars posters from the posters, or from the movies, excuse me, that I do like. And then she doesn't really count as a part of the collection, but I do have a kitten, and her name is Mara Jade, so technically maybe part of the Star Wars collection, but mostly just my cat. And then we move to the digital realm here. I have my tablet out for this. Um, of course, I have some other things that I like to read. I'm a big fan of George R. R. Martin, so I got some of those books on there as well. But I do have The Jedi Path and Essential Guide to the Force in digital form, because I used to well, one, I was in high school and college, so I never really had the time to read since I was working part-time, plus, you know, trying to do well in school. I have Revan, unfortunately, in both print and digital form. But then I do have 
Chewbacca, which is the kind of tribute to Chewbacca after his character was killed in Vector Prime, the Dark Empire trilogy, Jedi vs. Sith, uh, The Life and Legend of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which I actually got for free on Kindle, just for some random reason Amazon was giving it for free, so I figured, why not? It's mostly a young adult summary of Obi-Wan Kenobi's life, but it does have the very cool distinction of having uh, the duel written out from Legacy of Ashrod Het versus Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is very, very cool. Um, I also have the Crimson Empire Saga, which has the three main series, plus all the kind of little side stories. And I have the Thrawn Trilogy comics. Um, for some reason, when I was younger, I got Dark Empire 1, and then Empire's End, which is the uh, third installment of the Dark Empire Trilogy. Then we have Invasion, which is a comic uh, surrounding the time of the Yuuzhan Vong War, which I wish they would have continued. And then we actually have the subject of the next Legends Library full-length podcast, which is actually um, parts of the Legacy Volume 1, which, of course, I do have all three of, because Legacy is my favorite Star Wars comic. I do have some other omnibuses, and these, of course, aren't in any chronological order. Um, I have At War with the Empire, Volume 2, Dark Times, Volume 1, which is actually very, very good. I really enjoy the Dark Times series. Knights of the Old Republic, Volume 1 and 2. I do need to get the third one. Star Wars Tales, Volume 6, which is kind of just a collection of stories. It does collect the Outlander storyline, as well as a Kyle Katarn story, which is his only comic appearance, if I remember right. I also have Union 1 through 4, which details how Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade got married. And then I have Traitor and Unifying Force in digital, because, again, I used to, you know, have to kind of work with what I had, so I would read a lot and listen to audiobooks, but I still actually do listen to audiobooks quite a lot. And then I have just some other, like I said, just some nerdy stuff. I'm a big fan of George R. R. Martin. So, on a side note, I do also have the first novel adapted into comic form. So, I do have that. But that about does it for this, guys. Um, as I just said, the next episode will be reviewing a chunk of from the Legacy comic series, but until then, just keep a lookout for the new video, and may the Force be with you.